And that is to do with what has been happening uh, towards the end of last week. Raila Odinga has claimed that the government-to-government -government deal is a scam. President Ruto says nothing like that. In fact, we have more benefits than we would have were it not for the G2G deal. Watch. The cost of fuel shot up significantly after the deal. Why have things moved from bad to worse since the deal was signed? Well, the deal was a scam for which we now demand full disclosure and full accountability. It is corrupt and rotten to the core. It is state capture by Mr. Ruto and company and a conspiracy against the country. Ruto's collapsing the country while feeding Kenyans on lullabies. The only purpose of government is twofold. Number one, to guarantee international oil companies that they can extend product to Kenya for six months and that after six months we are going to pay. And we have kept our part of the bargain. We have made sure that they are paid their money by the oil marketing companies in Kenya. Number two, we gave them the guarantee that dollars will be available for them. The government of Kenya was going to make sure. We have made sure that that is the case. All right, Honorable Elachi, I saw you somewhere in an event with the former Prime Minister, and I think he spoke about, the, about those matters. What are we dealing with here? Uh, because it appears like it's the word of the former Prime Minister versus the word of the President, yet I think what's burning with Kenyans is the cost of fuel that is, has gone up, the dollar against the Kenya shilling, or rather the Kenya shilling has depreciated against the dollar. What are you dealing with here? And are we likely to get a solution from this? One, I think what uh, the Prime Minister is just asking in a very simple way is, number one, this is a G2G government uh, project. <laughs> Why didn't we just use uh, national oil? If it's a G, because that is our, that, that's the company for government. Mm. Why did we go to private entities to, 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 to deal with that? And I think that is one thing many Kenyans would wish to see. Uh, uh, the other thing will, uh, the, the other question that will be really, really, really strongly and what Kenyans would wish to really get this morning is indeed, uh, as much as uh, we, we say we have paid the subsidies and all that, can someone just uh, tell us the declared VAT? And uh, that, that is all very simple things so that Kenyans can get, get back that trust to say, yes, we can trust the oil authority that is there in Kenya in terms of fuel. And are we, are we willing to ensure that we can know even the banks that financed? Because uh, apparently, you say you didn't remove it from the consolidated bank. Fine, tell Kenyans where the transaction was done, how it was done, whether the money was uh, removed from uh, private, uh, the, the banks that financed it, just openly. That, by the way, it, all the prime minister is saying, can we just see a transparent process that mm -hmm. can account to every question? So that when you're telling Kenyans, uh, while the, 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 the world, uh, the, the barrel is coming down, uh, we want to be told also in Kenya, fuel is going to go down. And then, uh, uh, then tell us why is it that we, sh we shall lose Uganda as much as I wouldn't want it to be a real debate because Uganda has a right to feel whether mm -hmm. they want to continue business with us. But when you say we have dollars, then we need to also see, see the dollar coming down. If you are telling us now we have offloaded dollar, because what is hurting Kenya is this thing of export. That is the one that is really hurting us. That is what has made the dollar to go where it is uh, skyrocketing. You mean now? Exports. Yes, yes. You said exports. Uh, yes, I said, ex I, I, I'm saying uh -huh. if we had exports like okay. other countries, then we will, we will cushion ourselves from the dollar. But now when you say you are releasing the dollars, are you saying we are going to hurt more? Because now we are importing again. So are we going to hurt more? 
Is that what the government is telling Kenya? Okay. And I think those are just a very simple basic All right. that uh, uh, people are questioning. And if we are just answered those questions, then now we get to the next and ask ourselves, so as a country, how are we going to cushion this uh, so that Kenyans, mm -hmm. as they go to Christmas, mm. they can feel uh, they are back on track? Because uh, today when you fuel that car, I wonder whether anyone will head to Western or whatever. They will have to stay in Nairobi, to be very honest, and send money home for people uh, than fueling. Right. Uh, and that is the more concerning issue. I want us to hear the president on what he says for those that have questions, where they should address them to. I want to challenge the speculators and the agents of the cartels to go and speak to the oil marketing companies in Kenya, to go and speak to the players in Kenya, instead of the speculation, rumor mongering, scamming that is going on. I want to assure them that the fishing they are doing for a scandal in this administration they are not about to succeed. Well, what is it, Honorable Elachi? I mean, I, 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 with due humble respect to His Excellency, I think one of the things in this country we believe in is public participation. Now, if the oil companies were kind enough, or well, then we go to court and then we question them to come and do us public participation for Kenyans to understand. Because why Kenyans are questioning is because nobody has ever given them that information. That is why we want the information. Now, we can't go to the oil companies because some of them, we don't even know them. First of all, they are, they are, it's like they control us and we control them, yet we are the ones who are supposed to make them wealthier mm -hmm. as they become because we are spending our money buying that fuel. But at the same time, you cannot not tell me if that is the question then we will go to court for them to come and do public participation before they bring the g2g yes and, and actually I, I think there's a matter still still pending in court martin i'm not excited about that uh, but there are people that went to court to challenge that um, arrangement um, may not have been concluded as yet but martin help us here because so many questions very little answers mm -hmm. the president says that <coughs> documentation is public so does the energy cabinet secretary but there's still a bit of secrecy in terms of the deal itself. What is the premium that was agreed upon there? These are the costs. How are they to be managed? Why was it that it is the three companies that are identified? Yes, the cabinet secretary says that the invited bids, they weren't unresponsive, but then went ahead to negotiate with the governments of UAE and um, Saudi Arabia. But there's still many answers pending. Yes, thank you. Allow me to first of all disambiguate something here. Mm -hmm. It's like the stories around uh, petroleum uh, in this country are not really known mm -hmm. because uh, most of the times you hear people talk about petroleum, you wonder whether they are talking about the same industry that uh, we are playing in. Um, previously, okay, let me start by saying this. The government of Kenya does not own even a single liter of petroleum in this country. They have not even one single liter of petroleum. Uh, in the said G2G, the government of Kenya does not buy or sell hmm. in that arrangement. All they do is to guarantee that if, a, if Otsoti gives him a fuel, I'll make sure that he does not run away with your money. Don't call it G2G, um, if that's the case. Then, so what is happening here is, mm. previously we used to have something we used to call OTS, the open tender system. And companies would bid to bring in product in this country for the purposes of uh, security of supply and scheduling or, and everything so that we don't run out of uh, uh, the products. The Ministry of Energy calls people to sit together to make sure that they know who is bringing product to what because petroleum is also a matter of national security, the availability of it. So what they do is if you give the best bid, you would get the tender to bring in the product. The three companies that are doing this today 
used to bring, if you go back to the statistics, you'll see they used to bring about 67% of all the fuel that used to come in this country. And they used to get them from these companies, most of these companies that they have, they, that is Enoch, Adnok, and uh, Saudi Aramco. So when it comes to the deal of, uh, when it comes to the deal of G2G, what happened is, the Saudi Aramco, the product still belong to them up until the LC matures. Mm -hmm. So they are the ones who nominated the companies that will bring in the product in this country. And how did they do that? They looked at the previous arrangement and the capacity and the number of trades they had done with these companies previously. So that is how they, be, they came up with the, I'll mention that because it's uh, in public domain, in uh, Gulf Energy Limited, mm -hmm. in Oryx and Galana. Mm -hmm. If you look at what has been happening, if you look at the history of those three companies and some two, three which are not there because they were, they were not nominated, is that they had been the best in terms of bringing in cargo previously through the OTS. And it was only prudent for the companies, or rather it was just, it made business sense to the companies out there, the international oil companies, to use those companies who have proved to have the capacity to bring in that product. So. Martin, does it bother you yes. that um, the cabinet secretary issued a statement and said that um, there was an invitation to tender first of March? Uh, the invitation, I mean, the bidding period closed on the 6th of March. They were determined to be non-responsive. Four days later, an agreement was signed. They call it memorandum. No, no, no. It is a master framework agreement. agreement. Mm -hmm. Four days later. And this is a deal that was preceded by negotiations with governments of UAE and Saudi Arabia within four days. Okay, I, is that possible? I am not party to that. The only way I, I saw it, because we used to follow what was happening is, the master framework agreement mm. did not necessarily have to include the, the companies that are bringing the product. Because anybody who comes to bring in the product under G2G will be bound by master uh, uh, no, no, the, no, no, the no. framework, the MFA. Let yeah. me read you an excerpt of the statement. Okay. On 10th of March, governments of Kenya through the Ministry of Energy and Petroleum entered into master framework agreements with Aramco, Abu Dhabi, that is ADNOC, mm -hmm. and Enoch, Emirates National Oil Company, Singapore, for the supply of um, petroleum products under a government-to-government -government arrangement, G2G uh, mm -hmm. arrangement, on extended credit terms of 180 days. So this master framework agreement was with these three companies. It, well, yeah, it is with the three companies. The, the government but of Kenya- they cannot be involved. No, I'm saying the local companies that get the product from there. You're talking about Adnok, uh, Enoch, okay. and Saudi Aramco. Let me refresh what I said. Okay. There was invitation to tender from international oil companies. It was made on 1st of March, closed on 6th opened, determined to be non-responsive. Government goes into negotiations with the governments of UAE and Saudi Arabia, and within four days they have an agreement that is signed with these three companies. Yet, all of them had entered their bids that were non-responsive. In four days time now, they are, they are okay. They meet the requirements. I would, I would have a problem with, if that happened instantaneously, I would have a problem. What I also, what I know is, and this could, it's, I'm also speculating in terms of that because I cannot speak for the government in terms of that, is that we had been importing from the said companies previously. So there was, because Kenya so, consumes. Wait, if 67% of fuel was brought by the oil marketing companies or by the under the OTS companies? under the OTS uh -huh. over 67% of the fuel that we have in Kenya we used to have in Kenya then was imported through the three companies called uh, the Gulf oil marketing companies yes oil marketing companies okay fine Gulf and this, the, the but what was the source the international oil companies what the same companies the said companies the Aramco Adnok because what happens here is so it is the same players that. Uh, Yes, it's the same players, but because then they just, the, the credit line used to be um, one month, Monthly. 30 days, mm. the LC. So the government came to, just to play a role of telling them, guys, you can continue doing business, mm. but will give us an extended credit of six months, 180 days. So we just come here to say, we guarantee that the, same, the time that you have extended, your money will be paid. At what cost? Now, in terms of the costs, um, they have uh, they fix premiums, and 
to ensure that uh, they, they, you know the way when you go for a credit, when you go for credit, they always the, be constant. There are those the ideas that are constant. How much is the premium? When we started, I think it was 118. Um, and 90 something for what is for 118? Super. 118 dollars per what? Per I think metric cube. Metric cube. Uh -huh. And I think 90. I'm not very sure of, of off head. Eh? And uh -huh. 90. I think 96 there about also for. So th for that's when we started. PMS. How about now? When we started. So what what I I am aware of is that the government went back to negotiate. Uh, but that is two months ago to negotiate for oscillation. Because it was, uh, they were fixed. Previously, they were fixed, and it was very important that they have a, a clause that allows those uh, premiums also to oscillate, depending on what is happening in the international what does that markets. Mean? Yes. What does oscillation mean? Oscillation means if the products go down, if the premiums go down, the freight and premium goes down, they 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 reflect the same. And when they go up, when they go up, they also go up. How much is it now? With I am. I don't have the figure currently. I don't have the figure. So. Would you say that oil is more expensive now because of this deal or not, in terms of the premium? Okay, what I, what I would say about, uh, in terms of premium, yeah. in terms of premium, um, what we have in terms of premium reflects the international market. I'm I would not saying, say it is, it is... You've told me the premium at the start was $118 yes. per metric cube. Per no metric words. cube, yeah. Is that higher than what it was before the G2G? When we were starting the, the G2G, it was, it was lower. Then price, prices started plummeting. Mm. Then it was higher. And that's what prompted now the government to go back and renegotiate. Because, uh, you know, we, we buy products here two months prior to the month that we have now. Like now, uh, if you are to look at what is likely to happen, is that in the month of December and in the month of January, prices are supposed to go down in a, a, quite a chunk. Okay, I hear you. Uh, Honorable Coach, tell me, uh, what shall we do with all this information? Because the president says that this information is in public domain. Um, very few people know about it. In fact, this premium issue, apart from those that are in the sector, you don't hear a lot of answers from people that are not. Like he's saying, uh, oil importation and oil deals are extremely complex uh, processes that sometimes even ordinary people will need an explanation to understand. Even we as members of parliament will need explanation mm. to understand. But like he's saying, there has been, and, and we want to believe, uh, and some of us are privy to that, is that it cushioned uh, the public from the demand of uh, the dollar every single month. So that there was huge demand every single month from oil marketers. And number two, there has been a press statement that were issued by the oil marketers on exactly what their intention was uh, to do. Mm -hmm. So this G2G, like he's saying, the government is, is, is not a broker. The government is just trying to make sure to facilitate a process, but has no business with the oil marketers or any other deal that is happening in between. Nonetheless, we are subject to global uh, market. We are subject to global situations, and the global oil has been rising, uh, like it is noticed everywhere. It is not fair, and it is not real to say that our region, like uh, I've, I've seen many people saying that Tanzania's uh, uh, oil is cheaper than Kenya or Uganda for that matter. If you check, they're actually higher than Kenya market. So, and, and we are not, and you can imagine, this is without subsidy. You can, so I think we are doing fair enough. To come to the issue of the debt uh, that I, I promised to answer you. No, the, no, no, before we go there, uh, you haven't told me about um, where Kenyans, because you're saying it's complex, fine. But where is that communication? Whatever is talking about the premium, it has not been communicated. Yeah, but I'm saying that the information is out there. It was tabled in Parliament. No, no. If anyone is if keen to if check. If you look at the statement of C.S. Davis Churchill, yeah. it says a lot of things, but it doesn't say what the premium is. It blames the international oil market. It doesn't say what the premium is. Yeah, that's the risk. I mean, but if you if you if you ask me, the, the, that's the communication that we've been able to negotiate, so that we be paying in. We given a grace period of six months, and this arrangement is G to G, and it is being done in Kenya shilling. It saves us. You must remember that we found a depleted two billion uh, dollar uh, of our foreign reserve. That is really what put the pressure on, on, on the shilling against the dollar, and it is, was important to, renew, to negotiate on a G to G, to G uh, arrangement, if you, if, you, if you may. So for me, unless there are other questions outside that, I think it's, of course, people will make politics out of everything. 
I mean, there is a story that you were run when you walked in do, today. Do you think it's important to disclose this? It is important. Concern. The government, it is very important. The government spokesperson, so, so, and it is even very good for Kenyans to demand. So to how know do the Kenyans answers. get that information? The because government spokesperson is in there. Honorable Coach, let me tell you, because uh, Kenyans are feeling what they are feeling. Agreed. She, she says that uh, many people may not drive or travel to Western Kenya because of the cost of fuel. Yeah. But the essence of information Western may Kenya be lost. <laughs> you just said Western Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> what she said. Okay, okay. Yeah. End of quote, I should yeah. have said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the essence of the questions may be lost in the politics, because now you're blaming Absolutely. politics, mm -hmm. but there are some valid questions that Absolutely. they are being asked. I so agree. Where do Kenyans get that information from? The government spokesperson has just, was just appointed recently. It is important. And I, after this show, I will make, purposely make it uh, happen I, yes. I have to, so that he brings out exactly what the deal is and make it in a very simple way that mm. Kenyans will understand mm. what is it that we entered in between so that okay. it, it will demystify many of these myths that are running around and gossips and people who don't understand. I'll be lying if I say that I can confidently defend the position uh, with the knowledge of petroleum. I, I don't know the field. You were doing so well until you said gossip. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not complaining. So, so. Uh, on the issue of uh, debt that I promised to, yeah. to, to answer, first of all, mm. we passed a debt anchor uh, bill. Now, we do not have absolute numbers in our, in our debt uh, borrowing. It is, it is anchored on 55% of our GDP. Our GDP now is at 14.2 uh, at trillion. So around that, for the next five years, that is exactly how our borrowing is going to happen. It is also allowed that you can borrow up to 5% of that in an extreme uh, needy situation. So you said that the GDP is what, 14 point what? Our GDP right now is 14.2 trillion. Uh, is that June 2023? And the debt tanker is 55%? About 55%. And what is that? How much you, is that? You can do the math. You have the computer. 7.8 trillion shillings. Yeah. You're now at 10.4. Yeah, you're allowed to do even 5% above that 55% uh, so of debt. 60% would actually are, we, be what? We are still perfectly within. No, you're not. We are. I'm telling you, it is not, our debt is not anymore anchored on an absolute number. 60% would be just over 8.4 trillion shillings. You know, it's 10.4. How, 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 we're using what, 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 uh, you just told me that the GDP is 14 point, 14 point something trillion shillings. Yeah, the current debt level is 10.52 trillion. Uh-huh. So, it was estimated that it was going to go slightly to go, it was estimated that it was going to slightly go above this year, above the ceiling, it, it, which is still perfectly okay. Because okay. we are not, assuming, there is no- Assuming yeah. what you said, that you're enough transition, transition to debt anchor of 55% of the GDP. Yeah. You've told me the GDP is 14 point, is it 14.4? Yes. So 55%, I told you 7.8 trillion. It is okay. They will you just... told me you're allowed to go plus 5%. Yes, and even still come further and amend the PFM so Act. So 60%, just hold on, 60% yeah. of 14 trillion would be 8.4 something mm -hmm. trillion. Mm -hmm. It is still lower mm -hmm. than 10.4 trillion. You're still allowed to come and amend the PFM Act and you still can... But continue. you haven't amended. This is what you're using. How do you know? You say. You're telling me that's what you're using. That's what I'm saying, but then so I know. in an extreme situation, the government is allowed to spend and still come back to parliament and amend that figure. It is, it is still perfectly within their, their mandate. Okay. Uh, Senator Sotsi, you said that uh, Hasla Fandis has come. Yes. Uh, let me clarify that. You see, the statistics that have been given show that 29% of the Hasla Fund is at portfolio uh, risk, meaning that it's, it's, it's being defaulted. And 29% is not a small percentage. So is that a mistake of the borrowers or the government? Well, it's a mistake of the government. How? They're not the ones... What mechanism? When, are... when you lend out money, you must put in place mechanisms to recover your money. There are no mechan proper mechanism, and that's why the default rate is very high. SACOs, the average default rate is 8.6%, a SACO. Okay. So, so when you talk about 29% uh, sum, it's mm. so high. And that clearly All right. tells you that uh, the whole thing is a, is a scam. Uh, let me come to the no, issue. So, sorry, we are out of time. Let Senator me, Sotsi, allow me, to, there's something allow that me to say something on the oil deal. 
because it's not fair that 20 seconds they have had an opportunity to talk and we have you started not it senator you see this is not a government to government deal because a government to government deal has to be between two governments and it has to go through public participation and approval of parliament this is an arrangement between kenya government and companies in saudi arabia it can never be a government to government deal number two the hard questions that kenyans are asking is that why has uganda last week uganda parliament passed a bill to uh, cut off uh, oil deals with kenya why did that happen in july this year the same cs4 energy told us that government wants to renegotiate the deal what prompted this renegotiation of the deal it clearly shows there is a problem and then the banks which uh, said they want to participate in this process i'm told they have developed cold feet because the deal is not as good as they expected so there is something wrong and uh, when hone bokoech talks about state capture commission i think the state capture commission has to start with this g to g deal and when they say there is a mess in the economy Agreed. we wonder because okay. honorable ichungwa was the budget chair for the last 10 years during Kib no, 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 it, Kenyatta's it was, it was regime not Duale was there senator Duale was there as the majority leader senator they are the ones who are passing these things in parliament thank you so much but Honorable Kimani Shung was not chair of budget for 10 years. He was budget chair Senator Godfrey from in the Kenya last party. Party. Thank you so much. Honorable Bitwe Zalachi from Dagoreti North. Uh, Martin Chumba from Petroleum Outlets Association. And um, Nelson Koech from Belgut Constituency. Thank you for making time for us of this conversation. Up next is Potty Monday. My name is Sam Gituku. See you again some other time. Bye for now.